Welcome back to Harrelson Trumpets. I'm Jason Harrelson. Today we are going to look at a really cool horn that I built. I mean, I'm very biased about this, but I had a lot of fun building it. It's called Circuit, and I did a lot of very fine engraving on this instrument to really make it special, uh, make it stand out from other instruments, and really to test what I can do uh, with the engraving side of things. So here is Circuit right here. I'll hold it up close to the camera. As you can see, I have very deep engraving of a circuit board, not just on the tuning slide, well, it's also on both sides, but on the bracing, on the finger buttons, the top caps, even the bottom caps. And I'm going to post a video, uh, I'll include a clip in this video of uh, all of this engraving in better light because the showroom is really designed to have a lot of contrast and it's harder to pick up all the details in this lighting but when I take it outside it really is easy to see and actually it's it's actually very easy to see right here in this room it just somehow the, the reflections um, cause it to not show up as well uh, on the camera so this horn uh, has the finger rings, all three ergonomic finger rings, engraved with the circuit board on both sides. All three finger buttons, top caps, top bracing, bottom caps, even the Saturn water keys um, have the engraving on it. And on this trumpet, I put a Saturn water key on the second slide, and I personally prefer that. It's much faster and easier than a tuning slide. So you just press down all three, and you push this at the same time and blow it out. And if you need to get it out of the third, you could always just use that if you want to. Um, but the tuning slide um, doesn't really need a water key. And I didn't want to detract from the design anyhow, but this is something I have on my own personal horn. So this particular instrument um, is one of the last H-series trumpets that I built. And it was built using a tuning slide that I had retired many years ago. This is style B, and uh, I had a style B sitting around for years. I just kept a few over the years. And um, that is something we haven't seen in probably like eight, nine, 10 years now. So uh, I, I believe it is the last one I have. And um, other than that, everything else I believe is brand new on this horn. That's the only part that was made previously. It has, uh, for the configuration, um, First, I'll just read this for you. Circuit, one-of-a-kind design, July 25th, 2023. Built by Jason Harrelson, me, in Denver, Colorado, USA. Lead pipe, SWE1, Bell 3R, tuning slide A. That was, originally it was supposed to be tuning slide A. And when I started putting it together and doing the engraving, I realized I had this slide and I thought B would look so much better. A is actually the real thin one, like this. And this is actually B. So what's written on here is incorrect. And you know, if you buy this horn and someday you, you resell it years later, I would keep a copy of this video so you can explain that to the next owner. Uh, however, I just say don't sell it. Um, I kind of want to keep it myself, but you know, I make a living building horns and then selling them. I can't just keep them all. That would uh, really not make sense. Um, but man, it's it's just a, a fun horn. And you know, I'm working on learning how to engrave all the way around some of the two parts. In the future, once we get into manufacturing our entire valve casing from one piece or two pieces, we'll be able to engrave all of that when it's machined. Um, so down the road, I can see doing full texturing all the way around the valve casings, but that's a couple years away. And same with the bell. If we machine the entire bell, we can do the full engraving around it. Technically, I can engrave around our bells right now. I just don't do it because it's very time consuming. All of this engraving added a lot of time to this build. Um, so this instrument really should cost a lot more. It should probably be in the eight to $10,000 range. And um, it just keep that in mind. You know, it, it really is that much work to do this kind of engraving. The one thing I didn't show you is the circuit logo on the second valve right there. Uh, there is a little circuit logo. Let's see if I can zoom in and get a little better lighting. I don't know, the lighting in here is not the best. But there it is, and the Harrelson logo. So those are there, let's play it. I'm really excited to play this horn. 
just because it was such a fun build. into any genre. Hmm, feels good. I do not have an insert in here. So by changing the insert in the VGR, I can adjust the flexibility, the slotting, the airflow, and the impedance. And the impedance is the most important part of that. So that's why we use the VGR on almost all of our instruments, all the way up to the Muse. And the VGR uh, allows you to match the impedance of your body with the instrument and the bell, and of course the mouthpiece is part of that, to find the best balance. And when you find that best balance, you get maximum bell resonance. So. I can work a little harder to get maximum bell resonance, but it's a lot easier when you find the right setting. That yeah, feels pretty good, it sounds pretty good. When you find that perfect balance, everything will feel like one note after another um, are completely even. So if you were to switch octaves, they feel like the notes are right next to each other. And uh, I'm not going to mess with the VGR right now, but if you have questions on that, I literally have hundreds of videos on YouTube where I discuss the VGR and show you how it works and I adjust it. Um, we're not going to do that today. I just wanted to show you this horn. I am going to release this uh, on Thursday and, you know, there's only going to be one, so I'm probably going to put a pretty fair discount on it because what I'd like to do is get a few of these uh, horns out there in the wild, let you guys play them and give me some feedback and allow me to further develop my skills in doing the engraving. And I would say this engraving, you know, if you were to rate it from one to 10, 10 being the best, I would say it is a 10, definitely. Like I made no mistakes in the engraving on this horn. And uh, I don't know if that was luck or just I've practiced a lot, but um, this is your opportunity to own a great horn that's very unique and it also gives me the opportunity to keep practicing the engraving. And I'll say this, it's August, it's mid-August right now, 2023. Um, I will be building probably 10 to 20 more instruments where I'm doing different things to experiment. And all of those instruments are gonna be a period in my build uh, career where it's a transition to what's coming next. So a lot of these instruments are probably gonna be very valuable in the future. They're of course valuable today, um, but I wanna move them quickly because I only have so much room in here and we're planning on releasing Rumors and Dreams soon. And Rumors and Dreams is gonna take up a whole wall until they sell out. And then the Muse series is getting all kinds of upgrades and that's gonna take up the wall behind the camera right now. So we literally will not have room for these horns. I don't want to put them in boxes. I'd rather just give them to you guys at a really fair price. You can almost think of it as, um, you know, we're not going to do a, a pro we probably won't do a big Black Friday sale because we will usually have sold out of most of our inventory by then um, every year. But think of it as like some of these prices are probably going to be Black Friday type prices only because I'm making so many and I want to move them so I can hone my skills and then all of that uh, practice and all that experience will go into the full art horns which will typically start fifteen to twenty thousand dollars so if you want the predecessor to the full art horns that I'll be building then the next you know ten or twenty horns will probably be very attractive to you uh, last thing when you buy one of our horns you have five years to upgrade to a new horn and we'll give you full trade credit so if you buy this today and whatever price you pay um, in five years, if you want to move up to a Muse or whatever the newest thing is or something just better than this, uh, maybe it has more modularity 
or a different configuration or it's lighter or I use new materials, whatever might be the reality in five years or in two years, whatever it is, you have five years to trade in and get full trade value as long as it's in the same condition. And I'll give you an example of that. This one right here is a summit that I built in 2013. Wow, August 29th, 2013. So nearly 10 years ago, and this client traded it in and got full credit and bought a muse. So, um, you know, that's something to consider because uh, we used to have that as an option. You could trade it for as long as you want. So if you bought a horn more than five years ago, I think that's four or five years ago, we changed the policy. Then you can still trade those older horns in as long as you bought it from us for full trade value. Uh, we do limit it to five years now only because we want to encourage you to trade them. And it's a great opportunity. And as far as I know, we're the only company that does that. So uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for checking out Circuit. And um, the next horn I think I'll show you guys is Dazzle. And that is another one that's fully engraved. And it'll be a lot of fun as well. All right, I'll see you next time.